Hey everyone, welcome to Royce Reports. I am your host, Royce, and on today's video, we're gonna be talking about what's going on at Embracer. So, let's talk about it. If you're a fan of Xbox and you like talking about games a little bit too much, well, you're in the right place. And think about hitting that subscribe button, maybe taking it out on a date, sleeping with it on the first date if you want to. I mean, that subscribe button's kind of sleazy, but think about it for a second. And today we're gonna be talking about Embracer. So Embracer, as you know, is this big conglomerate that as of recently, has been kind of gobbling up a lot of studios. They've been investing a lot in themselves and in acquisitions and it's pretty crazy to think that a lot of the companies that are doing these acquisitions are some big names like Microsoft and Sony and EA and take two right you see these multi-billion dollar deals that they're doing but the studio that you keep hearing about is Embracer they continue to gobble up more and more studios as time goes on and they keep investing heavily in all of these studios and IP. And it seems like this is starting to backfire for them. And it all started because of the fact that that deal that they have, that $2 billion deal that they were gonna get from the Saudi Arabian government fell through. And that kind of put a hole in a lot of their plans. And uh, there is a lot going on over at Embracer. Swedish gaming giant Embracer confirms laying off of 900 employees shut down 15 games following a challenging year. This is from Game Reactor. We have previously reported on the Swedish Embracer Group's negative results and the failure of the giant deal, which led to the closure of studios and the dismissal of 5% of the workforce. CEO Lars Windfors confirmed yesterday evening that 900 developers have been laid off as a result of that and that they are now working to stabilize the business. Saints Row Studio Volition has had to close down completely while Tomb Raider developers Crystal Dynamics have been forced to lay off 10% of their workforce too. There are also rumors that Free Radical Design have all been fired and the news Time Splitters has been shut down by Embracer. This while Dead Island 2 made a profit after being in development hell for several years and Payday 3 is already making a profit despite a troubled launch. So on top of all of this mess that they've really just gotten themselves into they have also might be losing gearbox gearbox might be going independent once more now this is another story that was happening a, a few months ago or last month sometime and it really seems that right now embracer is in dire straits and it's kind of sad to see that right because they they obviously invested a lot in themselves they trusted in themselves they believed in, in themselves to be able to go out there and succeed and to be able to acquire multiple AA studios and have those games turn a profit for them. But the thing about AA games is that AA games, as of right now, are probably the biggest risk in the market because it's sort of make or break nowadays. It's it's really that, that sad to see, but it, it is how it is. If you go and you make a game and it's not successful, then people are gonna be losing their jobs and at worst, the company could go under. And after not many hits with their with their franchises that they're working on, I think that Embracer is struggling right now. And I think their biggest game that they had under development, being Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, was something that they were really banking on. And now, even that is pretty much going nowhere. So a couple days ago, there was a bunch of people talking about how this game could be potentially dead in the water. And this comes from Jeff Grubb on his podcast. I just want to clear it up. This game is not being worked on right now, Grubb said. Just full stop. This game is not being worked on in any way at any studio. So a lot of people started thinking, oh, okay, well, what does he mean by that? Obviously, someone has to be working on it. And so that rumor came out and a lot of people were kind of speculating. He then went and even clarified even more about what he meant. 
The rumor was that it got taken away from Aspire, which has done lots of these Star Wars remasters and moved over to Saber Interactive, Grub said. Sony is wanting to be done with it. My stuff comes from PlayStation. It feels like it cannot happen without a partner like Sony. Sony seemed to be out. With the funding pulled, to me, it's definitely done and no reason for anyone to be working on it. The reality is, maybe someone somewhere is imagining it could happen and someone could be working on it. I didn't. I don't know that far. I don't know what's happening inside Embracer. They would have to find someone to make that happen with. I know Lucas is very excited to make it happen for years, so I think if Embracer can find someone, maybe it can still happen. There is still possibility of this game coming out, but it seems that Sony has walked away. There was reports earlier that Sony didn't like the direction in which Aspire was taking Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, so because of that, Embracer stepped in and removed them from the project and instead placed Saber Interactive onto it. And that was a huge shakeup. A lot of people trusted Aspire because of the fact that Aspire has worked closely with the Star Wars series because they are the ones that ported Star Wars to the Switch, they ported it to PlayStation, they ported it over to PC. And so they kind of know the game inside and out and they would be the ones to be able to do a full remaster. But I guess Sony didn't like what they saw. And that changed a lot of things. And now I guess Sony really doesn't like what they see with Saber and they just completely walked away. And I remember when they first announced this game, I was so jealous that Sony was gonna be getting this game exclusive for however long, one year, two years, whatever it may be, because they were going and producing this. And I thought to myself, wow, that is a huge L on Xbox because this franchise was born on Xbox. This franchise has a mainstay on Xbox. One of the studios that Xbox owns, Obsidian, did the sequel. And the sequel is considered one of the best sequels of all time. If you were gonna have this game come back, you could give it to Obsidian and Obsidian could do wonders with this game. It would be a huge hit for the Series X and S. It would be a huge hit for, for Xbox in, in a world where Sony has Spider-Man, right? And if you want to compete with Spider-Man, you need something as big as Spider-Man. So what is as big as Spider-Man? Batman, Star Wars. That, there you go. That's pretty much it. Like <laughs> those are the two things that can pretty much rival what Sony's doing with Spider-Man. And so when they announced this, I was super bummed that I was gonna have to wait to play this on Xbox. But now it's not just me waiting, it's everybody waiting. Even PlayStation users are gonna have to wait for this now because who knows when this is coming and who knows if this is ever coming. And what boggles my mind is that this is a game that has the foundation already laid out for it. And all you have to do is just modernize it and send it out. Just pick it up, deliver it to my front door, and there we go. A game of the year, game of the game of the generation here, and it, it's really that simple. But apparently, it's not. Uh, there's a lot going on here, uh, and it, it's sad to see that this may not see the light of day. But that is where someone can step in. They've even stated here. Jeff Grubb said that it's not happening with Sony. But someone else could come in and pick it up and maybe kind of fix it and, and, and still allow it to see the light of day. And I think that if Xbox wanted to, they could probably jump on this and, and work on it. You know, I just made a video about Fallout New Vegas 2, but Fallout New Vegas 2 can wait if Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is getting a remake from Obsidian. I would lose my mind over this. That would be amazing. But what does Embracer have to gain from that? Other than someone just taking the game that they were going to make from them. They're not going to... Star Wars KOTOR does not belong to Embracer. It belongs to Lucasfilm. So they wouldn't be gaining anything from this. They would want someone to fund them to do it. Not to have them take away the IP. So I just don't think that this is going to be given to anybody over at Xbox or given to Obsidian or anything. And I think probably some fans are probably wanting that to happen, myself included. But I don't really think that's a possibility. I think that Xbox could fund it in, in terms of, hey, you make the game and then 
put it into Game Pass, but uh, that's probably also very unlikely just because how popular Star Wars is. I don't think Disney really wants to take that uh, at all. I don't think they want to take that deal. They know how well this game will sell, so I doubt they'll use Game Pass. Uh, so this is just a huge bummer all around. And I kind of go back to just Embracer as a whole, right? They gobbled up all these studios more and they're, they're pretty much taking on more than they can chew. And we see the effects and it's, it's, it's so sad to see that they're even firing people from Crystal Dynamics who are working on Perfect Dark over at Xbox. And it's like, why are you shutting them down? Why are you pulling people away? Why are you firing people when they have a job already? Like Xbox is paying you guys to do something like, so why let go of that? Um, and I've been stating this ever since Embracer acquired Square and Eidos is that, that those companies, I hope go to Xbox. Like if, if Embracer needs to get out of this mess and they start kind of off holding some of their, their IP and some of their studios, then I think Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal would fit perfectly with Xbox. They have very important IP. They have a, a great, just a great couple of studios there. The games that they've built and the games that they, they have underneath their belt are fantastic. Even games like Avengers and Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, say what you will about the live service elements of Avengers. Like, yes, it was bad, but they fixed the game. They made the game playable. They made the game fun to play by yourself and they added a lot of content and the main story on its own is actually very entertaining and it's developed in a very high quality manner and it's not and i feel like a lot of people just shit on the idea of it being the games as a service instead of it taking on the single player and seeing it for themselves but it's still a beautiful looking game and it is a fun fun time and if you didn't buy it, you know, you can't get it anymore, but if you do have it, then give it a shot and see if you like it. And Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy is such an underrated gem that uh, I'm surprised it didn't get more recognition for what it was doing. And again, this is Eidos and Crystal. Like, these guys can make those third-person action-adventure games that Xbox is lacking on. Like, the only other studio that Xbox has that's actually doing anything like that is Ninja Theory with Hellblade. Everything else is just an RPG or shooter or a racing game. And I kind of want more of those games. And I know that a lot of Xbox fans don't really want more PlayStation games, uh, so to speak. They kind of just want Xbox to do what they're doing. But because of Game Pass, because you need variety, I think it's very important that Xbox goes and tries to get these studios. And if you could get those studios with the IP of like Tomb Raider and Thief and De Deus Ex and freaking who knows what else, right? Like if you could go and grab all of those Soul Reaver, then and add, just have that content in Game Pass, that is a huge win. And I think a lot of people would really like that. And having some of those games come exclusive would be pretty cool. And it's all just wait and see right now. We don't really know if, if, if Embracer can come back from this. They talked about Dead Island 2 being successful. They talked about Payday 3 being successful. Some of the other things that they didn't mention is the fact that Remnant 2 over at Gearbox is also a pretty successful game for them. But even with all of that, it still wasn't enough to prevent all of this from happening. So. What will it take to prevent all these studios from going defunct and all these people losing their jobs? Because it doesn't seem like Embracer can really handle a whole lot if they're firing employees, if they're reducing manning, if they're reducing costs, and if they're canceling 15 games. Something has to change, and I think Xbox can step in and really help out and gain some stuff as well. I mean, like Xbox loves to be the little the condor, <laughs> the vulture over over dying studios, over studios that are kind of need help. And so this is just a like a little 
a little bell, a little dinner bell for Xbox over here to come in and swoop in and, and, and kind of make things happen. But what do you guys think about Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic getting canceled? Do you think we'll see it? Do you like this game? Do you want to see it remade? And do you want it to see it remade in the original way of how they did the combat? Or would you like to see a more modern take on Star Wars? And what do you think about Eidos and Crystal? Entering the Xbox family. Do you think that's a good idea or do you think maybe Xbox should just stay calm for a little bit? You just bought 69 billion dollars worth of a studio and all of its developers and IP you don't need anymore Let me know in the comment section below and again There's a subscribe button there and if you didn't take it out on the first date uh, There's a second date option for you and it's here right now and I suggest you take it but Thank you for stopping by I'll be seeing you on the next one. Remember, take it easy.